Hey guys, I'm showing you a different angle of my table. Yes, this is my messy art table. Here you go. Welcome to another kids art video. So in this video, we're going to start a series where we do little paintings and, and things every now and then. We're going to do a watercolor sort of painting today. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. This is a plant that lives on my kitchen counter downstairs. And I thought it was a good inspiration to do a fun, easy painting. So we're going to use it as insp inspiration. And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to create something that is inspired by this, but not exactly looking like this. I think it's going to be pretty fun and pretty easy. So I wanted to show you the plant first before we get started. Now we'll go back to the overhead table view and let's get going. Now as we get going to do this uh, video, I hope that... Y'all have done your chores and you've done your homework, you know, same old routine. I know I repeat myself a lot, um, but I am a mom. And so, yeah, um, you're minding your parents, hopefully, and everything's going all right for you at home. And if it's not, ask someone you trust for some help. All right. That being said, um, we are going to get started with some kids art um, painting videos and we are going to, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do the uh, painting inspired by that little plant. Um, for those of you who don't know and aren't aware, I am a uh, mixed media artist and watercolorist. So I do have a lot of watercolor paints here in my art room. You don't need them to do this. At least I don't think so. I have a couple ideas on what you can do with simpler materials, but I am going to show you with watercolor paints how to do it and then with the supplies we've been using which include the water soluble crayola metallic markers and some crayons and pencils so let's get started um the first thing i want to do is tape off the edge of my paper so let's talk about the paper so this is watercolor paper so if you're going to do something like this you do want a thicker piece of paper you don't want to use a thin piece of paper so you want to use a thick piece of cardstock or preferably watercolor paper um, watercolor paper is not expensive. You can get very inexpensive brand kinds of watercolor paper. Um, if you don't have anything at home and you're trying to just use what you have, a thick piece of cardstock will work. You just want to be careful about how wet you get it. Um, you're going to need a straw <laughs> and you're going to need some pencils um, and some paints or some markers that um, like we, we saw in the last um, drawing video for the little journal which is here um on the seashell and on the popsicle we got some of these wet on a piece of plastic or on a plate and made sort of a painty ink out of them so you can use that too all right so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw the pot for our plant in just a plain number two school pencil. So I'm going to just lightly draw the shape for my pot. It's like a curved line. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. I'll zoom in in just a minute and then on each side of the curved line, do a straight line about the same length, right? Then bring it in just a little bit. Make sure that these are the same distance apart. Then a little bit in from the edge, start a new line and curve it, curve it in just a little bit. And draw another one on the other side. Do your best to make sure that they're straight. They're not going to be perfect, but we're okay with that. And then do another curved line to attach them. That's our pot. Then <clears throat> do a little bit of a curved line going the opposite direction here and here. All right, so let's, oops, there we go. Can you see that? So that's your that's our basic pot shape. Okay. So now I have to move a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's go there. So the first one that we do, let's do it with simple tools. And then I'll show you one with proper watercolor paints. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my metallic green 
I'm gonna put a bunch of it on our hard surface, whether it's a piece of plastic or it's a plate like this one. Um, you probably have something from the last drawing. And if you don't, make sure that you ask mom and dad's permission. Don't just go do this on one of their plates because I'm pretty sure that's gonna get you in trouble. And then we're gonna take the blue. And we're going to take a paintbrush and we're going to get them wet. Well, I'm going to start with just the green right now. Now with any watercolor paint or water soluble paint, the more water you put in there, the lighter the color is going to be. That's kind of an important thing. So if your color is too dark, add more water. I'm gonna take some of this color and move it down here with my paintbrush. Oops. There we go. And I'm gonna get my brush wet again and I'm gonna add more water to it. See, look how lighter, much lighter it is. Okay. Then I'm going to put the plate on the side and I'm gonna take the light color and I'm gonna put a bunch of it here I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to blow like that. How fun is that? Same color. I'm still using the lighter color. Okay. Try not to make a big mess. <laughs> then I'm gonna take my darker color and put the darker color on. Now, one of the things about water color paints, water soluble paints, is they're just gonna go where the water is. So unless you put it down here where it's dry, it's not gonna go there by itself. Okay, if you get some paint like right here where you don't want it, take your brush with some water, put some water there, grab a rag. You won't get all of it up, but you'll get probably most of it up. Okay, just like that. And you wanna let that dry and then we're gonna do some more. Okay, so I took our green and I added some of the brown to it and I'm gonna get it wet again. Just to give me, that'll give me a little bit of a darker color. See what happened? And we're going to put that on here. Puddle some of it so we can blow with the straw. Okay, I'm gonna also take it before that dries and I'm gonna just add some of it to like thicken up some of the lines that we have gotten from blowing the paint around. This isn't exactly the right paintbrush for it, but I'll show you in the other one using a different brush, but that's okay. We're gonna also take one of the lighter colors. I'm gonna add some more of that to the background. How fun is that already? Sop up some of that extra water and paint. Okay, let's work on the pot just a little bit. 
So I've got our um, blue here on, that I put on the plate too. I don't want it too dark. Now the thing with watercolor paints or water soluble paints is once you have it on there, you generally can't do a lot to take it back. You can get some of it up, but not all of it. So always start with lighter colors than you think you want because you can always make it darker, but you can't make it um, lighter, not easily. So I'm gonna put a shadow here under the lip of the pot and then also down the side. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint and then I'm gonna come back with water. Again, this is really not the right brush for this, but we're, I'm gonna use what I have because we're all about that, right? I'm gonna, while that's wet, I'm gonna come in with our rag and blot it up a little bit. In my opinion, that's a little bit dark, so. You might like it that way, it's a little dark for me. Okay, I'm gonna put some of the dark here. Got some outside our line. Oops, <laughs> okay. I'll take a little bit of the darker. While things are still wet, it'll move around in the water. Okay, I am gonna take a little bit of that brown and make some brown inky paint. And let's just put a little bit of it here underneath the plant where the dirt is, right? Okay, we're not quite done yet, but look how cute that looks. Um, we are gonna dry, let that dry again before we go do the next step, I'll be okay, back. Okay, now let's just define a couple of things. We don't have to do too much, I don't think. Um, so we're gonna take a black, again, just a plain black pen like we used in the daily drawings. Um, a plain, this is a Vic Crystal ballpoint pen. It's nothing fancy. I'm gonna not push down too hard into the paper, but I'm going to redefine some of our lines for the pot, keeping it loose and sketchy, not being too concerned about things being completely perfect. We're not about perfect, right? And then define just a few of your pieces of plant. Follow the lines of the paint when you blew on the paint. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a white pen. I did finally get this one to work. Now the plant has um, white lines on the branches and so the darker your green paint is the more these lines are going to show up take my paint pen too. Just do some little accents with the paint pen that are a little bit darker. That's, that's a good painting. So there you go. I didn't use anything special. One thing you always want to remember when you create a painting is make sure to sign it. Yeah. Shall we see how we can do that with proper watercolor paints? 
Hang on just a second. Okay, let me start by saying you don't have to have watercolor paints to do that, do this painting. We just proved that. I used what we had that we were using for the daily drawings. But if you have some watercolor paints, maybe you've got a set of Crayola watercolor paints, um, that'll work just fine. These are Winsor Newton, this is a Winsor Newton pocket set. Um, it's not super expensive, but you can use Crayola. Use what you have. I'm gonna put mine uh, here first and let's get them wet. So when you get them, they're usually dry in cakes like this. It's called a cake. These are half pans. I'm gonna get them wet. And then put them as, put them up here off off slightly off camera. I have my pencil back again. I've got two. These are watercolor brushes. I only use these for watercolor. I have a half inch, a flat, a small flat brush, and then I've got a small round one. This is a number four round. We're gonna put them in some clean water. We've got our straw still. So like last time, the first thing we want to do is draw our pot. So we want to start with our curved line and then go down one side and then make the same size straight line on the other side and go in just a little bit and in just a little bit, just like we did last time. Then we're going to go in slightly on each side and we're going to draw a straight line that goes in, tapers in just a little bit like that. And then we're going to Draw a curved line. Now, once you get your paint on here, these pencil lines really won't show much. Um, once your paint is dry, you can erase them before you do your pen work. But I really, I, I like seeing the pencil lines underneath my paintings, so if they show, I'm not too concerned. Then we wanna draw our other little lines here at the top, just like that. Okay, so just like last time, same kind of shape as last time. So now we're gonna take our flat brush, the bigger of the two brushes, which has yellow paint on it for some reason. Or the plate does, I don't know. And we're gonna grab, um, we have two greens in here. We have a sap green, which is a yellowy green, like that. And we have viridian, which is a darker blue green. For right now, we're gonna go with the sap green and I'm just pulling a little bit of the paint like last time with watercolor paints or water soluble paints or ink. The more water you use, the lighter the color is. So I'm just grabbing a little bit and then I'm gonna put some water because you can always make it darker but it's harder to make it lighter, especially if you're using watercolor paint. The marker lifts really easy. The paint doesn't always so I'm gonna take my light green paint here, and again, we're gonna puddle it on the top of our pot in the middle. I'm gonna just add a bunch of it. And then we're gonna take our straw. And then we're gonna take some more. Do it one more time. And we're gonna just put some of the pigment back down here because we blew it all away. Okay, we're gonna pick up our water droplets. Okay, we're gonna dry that and we're gonna come right back. I will say about the drying part, you don't have to let it dry at all or all the way uh, before you go on to the next step, but then your colors are gonna mix a little bit and you have to be okay with that. The easiest way to let it dry is to just do a couple of these or do these while you're working on your drawings and just put this aside and let it dry while you're doing something else. All right, so now we're gonna take some more of that sap green color, add it to our pile of water. So we have a darker color. I'm also gonna take a little bit of the Viridian and mix it in with the sap green. And then I'm gonna put it down here, just like we did last time. We're just using paint instead of watered down marker.
Okay, let that dry again and I'll be back. Okay, time for the details like with the other ones. So we're gonna start with some loose sketchy lines to outline the shape of our pot. It's for me, painting is all about suggesting shapes rather than trying to be super realistic about things. Um, that's not who I am as an artist and a painter. Uh, if it's what you think you want to explore, go for it. There's a lot of great tutorials for realistic drawing and painting on YouTube, but that's not what I'm about. I think it's more fun to suggest shapes. So like with the other one, I'm going in to suggest some of the vertical lines of the plant um, following some of the paint lines that I see that came. Okay, and then we're gonna take our two white pens Now you can see right there, can you see right there how the white gel pen is showing up darker uh, here because this green is darker than what we got with the marker. And that's one of the big differences you'll find with using um, a Crayola marker versus like even Crayola watercolor paint. And then we're going to go in with the paint pen again. Just like that. What's the last thing you do before you finish? Sign it, of course. All right, so there we go. There are two watercolor paintings. Uh, that I hope that you have fun recreating and if you decide to do a different kind of painting I would love to see what you do if you have a way to share them with me um, You know painting and creating is a lot of fun and very um, Therapeutic I know a big grown-up word, but it's a really great way to um, Have some fun in a creative constructive healthy normal way so I hope that you um, explore it and decide to give it a try. I love painting, I love watercoloring. One of my things about watercolor is I can take it with me anywhere. I just need a piece of paper, my little paint box and a paintbrush. Um, and if you have one of these brushes that has water in the handle, you don't even need a cup of water because there's water here already. So that's it for today. I hope that you all have fun with it, um, that you have, um, found good and fun, interesting ways to stay creative while you're staying inside. And don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.